Hello, good morning again. Uh, our topic for today is a continuation of our review of the uh, fundamentals of fluids. So now we are going to discuss the flow in a closed conduit. When you say closed conduit, it means that uh, it means pipe, okay, which refers to a circular in shape when you say pipes these are closed conduits which used for carrying fluids or gases under pressure so here the area of flow here is uh, is full no it is said pipes are referred to a conduit which flow full so when you say flow full the area of flow if that is your circular pipe having a diameter of D so the area of flow is equal to the area of the circle because if the conduits are flowing partially full it is called now open channel so if the flow if the conduits flowing full so it is under pressure and it is in the in the topic under flow in a closed conduit but if it is partially full it is now open channel so when you say partially full if this is your circular section okay if that if this is again if this is your circular section your pipe is partially full so it is exposed to atmospheric pressure so that is already an open channel so the fluid flow in pipes may be either steady or unsteady in steady flow there are two types of flow that exist you have laminar flow and turbulent flow in between of laminar flow and turbulent flow there is a critical flow of course so steady flow this occurs when the discharge q passing a given cross section is constant with time so uh, the flow rate here is constant with time when it passed into a given cross section of the pipe if the flow q at the cross section varies with time so the flow there is unsteady okay so it varies with time okay i hope you remember in your fluid mechanics when you say laminar flow the path of the fluid particles it will not cross or intersect so there is a flow a smooth path of the fluid particles so if this is if this is your a fluid particle so it follows a cert, certain path so it is called laminar flow like this no the flow there is very smooth it follows a certain path of flow however if the flow is turbulent the path of the fluid flow uh, particles is in irregular and conti continuously cross each other so the velocity the velocity distribution exists across the section of pipe with the result that the entire fluid flows at a given single value the flow is turbulent when the reynolds number exceeds 2000 for laminar flow if the reynolds number is less than 2000 so here you can see that the fluid particles are very chaotic no they are disturbed so there's no uh the 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 um the flow there is turbulent no so in in, in a chaotic uh uh event no uh, and it's not like the laminar flow that the flow there is you can say it follows a certain path 
for the critical velocity <clears throat> the critical velocity of the pipes okay is the velocity below which all the turbulence are dumped out by the viscosity of the fluid so here the reynolds number at the critical flow is equal to 2000 so what do you mean by the reynolds number it is a dimensionless ratio of the inertia force to viscous force so you have here in r is equal to dv over okay i hope you remember what is this over is it dynamic or kinematic Okay, that is kinematic viscosity. Okay, where the kinematic viscosity is equal to dynamic viscosity over the density of the fluid. Here, the D is the diameter and the V is the velocity of the fluid. Okay, so if you use dynamic viscosity, just um just uh, substitute the value of the kinematic viscosity to dyna dynamic viscosity divided by rho so this will be in r is equal to dv over uh, dynamic over the density so you have to so uh this is a division operation. So, just get the uh, reciprocal. So, you have D. Okay. Okay, D times rho over U. So, the answer now is equal to rho dV over nu. Okay. So, that is the derivation of the formula. Okay, for the units of the kinematic viscosity, we have meter squared per second or feet squared per second. And for the dynamic viscosity, the unit there is newton per meter squared second or newton per meter squared Okay, I hope you remember, Newton per meter squared is what? That is Pascal. So, that is Pascal. So, the unit of the dynamic viscosity can be also Pascal second. Okay? For the diameter, this is equal to 4R for a non-circular pipe. So, the, from the Reynolds number formula, substitute the value of R. So, you have N is, NR is equal to 4R, okay, because you have rho dv, no? NR is equal to rho dv over nu, mu, and that is equal to rho 4R. V because D is equal to 4R. So you have new. And this is now the derivation of this formula. Okay. The R there is also called hydraulic radius. That is just equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe over the wetted. No? Not only the perimeter, we have to make, uh, we have to correct that. That is the wetted perimeter. So, what do you mean by wetted perimeter? That is in contact with the water. That is the, the boundary or the perimeter that is in contact with water. So, for example, if the, you have here a circular pipe, uh, the weighted perimeter is only here. 
that is in contact with the okay that this is only the perimeter that is only in contact with the water okay the part no the part of the pipe that is wet or in contact with the water so how we can get the viscosity of the fluid so the viscosity of the fluid will decrease as your uh, temperature increases so here you can have a table no because we cannot memorize this one pero at the but at the standard temperature we have this Mm. Okay. Because there are some problems don't don't specify the temperature of the water. So we have only to use uh 20 degrees, no? Um here the physicist used 4 degrees as the standard temperature of the uh water but for the for us the engineers we use 15 15 degrees celsius for our standard temperature but here there's no uh there's no 15 we can use 20 for our uh, standard temperature or for our standard properties of the fluid if ever the problem will not specify the temperature.